Gaurav, I think uh, you are uh, you have made a very nice point. The that's why I think I asked the question about energy optimization. Uh, even the FDA trials that were happening uh, just recently. Uh, the point is that because in the trials you fix the energy levels, you fix the spot separation, you sp uh, fix the line separation. So act earlier, I would say that we were delivering much more energy, which Dr. Ramamurthy also pointed out. So you have to optimize the energy settings so that you don't have excessive OBL and you don't have cold areas. So if your if your cleavage is good, the separation is really very very simple, and therefore the amount of manipulation that you do is much less, and the, the patients have six six vision. So today I. Uh, until of course uh, I, I it's been rare that we are not getting six six the next day or six five the next day uh, because by the time you have got done x number of cases and it will depend from individual to individual and i don't think it's more than 50 eyes or 650 to 100 eyes that you have then you have optimized so please understand anybody who has uh, purchased the ma uh, machine should optimize the energy settings and it should not be at the factory settings which are there. Uh, each machine will have a little bit difference in its optimization. Each environmental condition may have a little bit uh, in the uh, optimization and how you separate out. So there is no question of having excessive inflammation nowadays as Earlier also, I think the speed of the laser was less and that was also the reason where when even femtosecond laser came for the flap, there was supposed to be more inflammation and more uh, reaction similar to a DLK or whatever. Once the energy optimization has been done and uh, just to tell you that we are also working on uh, with another company and the most important thing is to optimize the energy. And that is where the maximum input is going. So that is uh, uh, what I would wish to say and uh, Gaurav, you have pointed it out uh, pretty well. So I'll just go on with my uh, talk and that is uh, actually, um, I really, sorry, missed out on Dr. Titial's talk. So there may be a little bit of uh, overlap, but uh, uh, I'll be talking about the complications as to what can go wrong with the, uh, with the smile procedure. And as was pointed out, uh, conventional LASIK has moved on to blade-free LASIK and I would say that uh, though Dr. Garewal uh, says that he does only uh, uh, smile, I would say that 90% of my patients are smile and uh, we don't do uh, smile uh, if there are uh, very thin corneas where we can go on to surface ablation or if there is a hypertrophic patient or there is a mixed astigmatism. But apart from that, I think, of course, there is a, a, a question of a person not being able to afford uh, at least in uh, our hands, uh, smile is the preferred technique and we have all seen the uh, various steps of smile. I think I'll just go through. Dr. Tidal must have shown all this. Uh, there is no need for any excimer laser and uh, this is the normal procedure of smile as uh, you can see. So there are four passes to it. Uh, first is the uh, posterior surface of the lenticule which comes on. And as was told by Dr. Garewal, it's about 23 seconds uh, to 24 seconds that you have. Then you have the side cut. This is the uh, cut on uh, the, uh, the cap cut that is being happening. And you can see that this is a reasonably nice pattern where there isn't any significant amount of OBL. And then you have, you can reduce the size to two millimeters. Uh, that is what the machine allows, but you can go uh, lower than that. Uh, you can uh, just open the, uh, uh, the uh, side, uh, side cut. And I always prefer to go on the interior part first and then go to the posterior. And uh, uh, you can just go in uh, there, go in with a blunt rod and uh, separate out. And you can see that the separation is pretty easy. It just takes uh, one or two uh, firm steps on one direction and similarly uh, on the other direction that you have. And uh, it's a very gentle thing as, as Gaurav was pointing out, if you uh, are uh, really not manipulating much, as you can see, there is very little manipulation. Uh, the eyes will be pristine, clear the next day. And you can see this is the posterior uh, 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 area that we are going in, that is into the, uh, uh, the posterior part of the lenticule. And you can see there's a lift here uh, where the lenticule is getting separated. And uh, we can go in uh, through with a forceps and just remove it out very well. And you can see how gently and exquisitely it can come out. Now, uh, Dr. Gitansha has talked about the circle tre uh, uh, treatment and um, Vardaman also talked about it. Uh, but as things stand today, there is work that is going on where you can redo a smile on a smile. But as things stand today, either you do a surface ablation or you do what is a circle treatment. So the, the actual thing for which the circle treatment has been used, I will show you that. Uh, the innovations was talked about by Gitansha. So when you're doing at a circle, when you're doing a smile enhancement, you need a circle scan. And what you do is that this is, uh, this is the uh, posterior, uh, 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 posterior part of the lenticule, which was there. So we actually go and increase it 
from a cap to a flap so that is what we do and just let me show you what it is it's a very simple thing it because there is a plane that has already been created and if you have you have the old data you will want to go at the same uh, setting uh, same uh, bed thickness and you can see that we are extending the uh, the uh, cap to a flap and you see it's like a donut shaped and very nicely you can see that it has become a flap and uh, you can see that this is the area where the earlier lenticule was taken and you can go ahead and do a surface abrasion and put it back now what is very very important is that when you are looking at smile enhancements they are much much safer than if you are doing a lasik redo uh, because it has been clearly shown that if you relift a flap of lasik the chances of epithelial ingrowth as you can see here are much more as compared to a fresh cut so whenever you are doing an enhancement of a smile uh, you are actually cutting a fresh flap so as was see seen with the circle scan the flap is fresh and therefore you do not get the incidence of uh, the uh, epithelial ingrowth which is there now let us look at the problems that can happen uh, intraoperatively and postoperatively uh, so we'll be talking about all of them so let us just look at the intraoperative uh, first of all you can have interface debris so what is very very uh, important for you is that if you have interface debris like you can see that there is a lash here and you are having an interface debris you should redock remove this debris and then redock and recut so you can see here what happens is that there is going to be a cold area because of the cilia which has uh, inadvertently come and you will have an uncut area so the laser will not cut through uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, area so you have to be very careful and you have to separate it out it becomes a little difficult you can use this blunt rod or you can have a the duck build uh, spatula which is sharp on the sides uh, which can also be used and then you can go ahead and complete the procedure but mind you that fine fibers or something may not ma matter but a cilia like this definitely has to be removed now let us look at suction loss if you are having suction loss the reason for suction loss is that a flap normally takes about 12 14 seconds but if you are doing a smile procedure you have the suction which is supposed to be there for about 23 24 seconds now this is longer than otherwise the second thing is to maintain the near we are having a very soft gentle suction on the cornea so there could be a loss of contact between the glass interface and the cornea or because of head movements or of popular factors like excess reflex to uh, tearing or poor fixation etc now when you are looking at the suction loss it de depends on what state you have suction loss and basically depending upon that the machine will take you what exactly you have to do now, if you are first cut and it is less than 10% and there is a suction loss you can go back and restart the entire procedure without any problem if it is greater than 10% then you will have to convert it into a flap that means it has to be a femtosecond laser flap which is there. and in case it is uh, later on that you have then you can rework and you can recut or you can have just the side cut which is required so let me just show you the suction loss at various points so this is the posterior lens that is being made so you can see here that this is posterior and suddenly the patient jerks so we can do nothing but make this into a second flap and you can see that we have made it into a flap and we can complete the procedure on the same sitting uh, as a femtosecond laser that means the a, a lasik uh, procedure and not a smile procedure now if there is a suction loss at the time of doing the anterior loss of suction at this particular point so once you lose suction at this point you can go back and dock redock at the same point and once you have redocked the laser fire at exactly the same plane because you have not changed any settings and you can see that the laser is firing and then you have uh, the side cut and we will go ahead and you can see once this is the burp sign you go in uh, the obl comes out and uh, the clarity of the patient improves and then we can go ahead and do the dissection so i'll just go fast forward you can see that we have been able to do the dissection pretty well uh there is really no problem in uh, the interior and the posterior uh, separation that you have so if you have a loss of suction at towards the end all you have to do is just to redock you can use the ready to see the problem and you can see that we are able to uh, 
get a good outcome now if you are looking at dissection difficulty i we just third in the discussion uh, uh, with the professor tatyal but here you can see that uh, this is there is a lift on the uh, on the edge so we have gone into the posterior uh, uh, behind the lenticule this is posterior to the lenticule and once we try to search the, as to now trying to go in the posterior actually the posterior has already been separated so what you have to do now is to find out whether uh, there is a lenticule uh, anterior or posterior that has been separated so you have to just see so you just visualize so, so can you see that i found that there is an edge and uh, you can start separating it like a reverse catheter axis and once you have found the plane you can go in as you can see that the, you can go in into the plane and separate it out and uh, take out the lenticule so this is again something where you are it is just a question of visualization and trying to understand what is the anatomical planes that you have created and which plane you have entered and you can see that we can uh, remove the lenticule pretty well now if there is uh, as gitansha dr gitansha had shown there could be uh, there could be uh, cold areas and there could be fragmentation so you can see that the lenticule has been fragmented here uh, you can use in this particular case i haven't used uh, triams alone but again you can see you spread the lenticule uh, retain the lenticule then you can see that there is an area which is missing so if you actually even put fluid you can see that this is the lenticule fragment which is there you can go ahead and hold it and remove it Uh, post operatively oct can also be done but at that time any dye can be used or a tricot can be uh, used which is uh, which can be uh, used for uh, uh, finding out uh, if they need to be careful i normally do not use a straight forceps i use a bent forceps and uh, if you lift your hand uh, you can have a side cut extension and uh, the side cut extension epithelial uh, actually embedding of the epithelium as dr garewal has said you normally don't get an ingrowth because this is an epithelium which is here you can't see any streak which is taking it there so it is not an ingrowth which is there so you can go in and remove but as uh, vardman said uh, a better idea today would be to do a circle scan once you have done a circle scan you can actually lift it and remove the epithelium but otherwise you can go ahead to wash it out and maybe use mitomycin c at that particular point now if you look at post operative things uh, dry eye as was said is the least uh, that you expect in a patient of smile uh, the patients rarely complained of dryness until of course they have long term uh, uh, history of tech lens wear and had uh, sub minimal uh, tear functions prior to the procedure it is always better to optimize the surface before you go ahead and do a smile procedure also uh, we have reported a case of unilateral corneal ectasia now in the post op period uh, as uh, dr garewal was saying there are now cases of uh, ectasia that are happening in this particular case we have not been able to find anything wrong with the uh, with the pre op parameters and the case of unilateral corneal ectasia that has been managed with a uh, uh, intacts and uh, with a slinking patient is stable in both the eyes one eye only had a unilateral ectasia which is there Uh, now this case has been reported out of i foundation and i wish to thank gitansha for this this is a unilateral sterile infiltrate uh, which was uh, uh, seen following small incision lenticular extension so you can get this kind of a uh, uh, this kind of a picture that is there which is sterile uh, obviously there is a problem that you have to differentiate it between an infective and a sterile but uh, this has been also reported a case of lasik in one of the webinars i was uh, listening to somebody and this is the case of a sterile uh, uh, inflammation which is there and uh, it just responded with steroids and you can see uh, so to sum up i would say that there are uh, basically the challenges that you can get with smile you can have dl as a uh, this thing which is very rare you could have an infection that has been reported post smile uh, but uh, i think overall the challenges with smile are the initial learning curve i think there needs to be a little bit of more surgical acumen that is required for smile than that is required for a flap uh, but i think most of us uh, are able to get uh, through with the next uh, with the first 50 cases uh, the challenges with smile are rare i think the machine is very forgiving and these are manageable and there is no loss of best corrected visual acuity and what is important is that you need to have an appropriate knowledge of how to manage where you lose suction how do you go ahead what is wrong how is the dissection planes etc that is something very very important and now you have lots of lots of these uh, video that are available on youtube and the teaching uh, that is there i think uh, the things have improved significantly and smile uh, learning smile is no longer a challenge there are a lot of uh, places where you can get the smile induction courses uh, that uh, can be done 
so uh, overall as things stand today uh, with us we have about five machines of smile across center of site and this is the procedure of choice wherever we can afford we will prefer to have a smile unit which is there uh, the limitations with smile are that at present it is not approved for hyperopia though there are several studies that are going on there is no automated cyclotorsion compensation which i think is something that should come along and there is no available re smile for enhancement so you have to go ahead with either a surface ablation or a circle scan which is there <clears throat> so all in all that is a, a brief uh, summary of uh, the type of complications that you can have with smile treatment uh, and i would say that uh, the patients with smile are happier they are much better you great, get great outcomes and the stability of the outcomes is much more i think the incidence of regression and retreatment is far lower that we had uh, then when we, we were doing the laser vision correction through a flap and an eczema laser so this is a preferred technique for us uh, today and uh, uh, i have been able to show you the complications that can happen with smile thank you very much for your time